Today we're going to value paint, value shape paint a rose. So this is basically how to paint a rose if you want to paint in the style that I do. All right, let's get started. All right, hit Command Shift 4 at the same time and it will take a picture of this for you. You can then download this picture and have your own picture and either draw it or reproduce it in whatever way you want to, like a gridded kind of pattern, and do the same flower that I just did. There's nothing extraordinary about this rose. Here's the brush that I used. It's a number 12 flat, so I never used anything less than a number 4. No small brushes allowed. This is what the palette looks like at the very end. At the very end of any painting you do, you want to make sure that your colors look separate. If you look down and all you see is gray, then something's gone awry. All right, so let's get started on the process. So the process is I make columns of medium, dark, and light. And the first thing that I do is I'm going to map out. I do not use any kind of masking fluid. So I'm going to use Naples yellow to color in what are going to be the whites or the lightest part of the flower. So that's what I'm doing here because I don't want to drive over these. I want to see if I can leave them alone. If I leave them alone, they'll read as white at the very, very end. So this is probably the easiest step at all and of all. And all you have to do is squint and be able to see those shapes. And like I said, so that's the light column. I get those mapped in. And it's, it's somewhat careful work, I have to say. You've got to look at shapes, looking back and forth at the photograph. And not be thinking about anything other than shape. Don't be thinking about petals. Don't be thinking about what's for dinner. <laughs> All right, so the next thing is the darks. First dark I mix up is a mixture of alizarin crimson and a little bit of ultramarine blue. I'm making that tilt way toward red than I would than I would do toward blue. This is going to be my darkest dark. Nothing can be darker than this than the shapes that I'm putting in right now. So I've taken care of my whitest whites or my lights. Now I'm taking care of my darks. And all I'm doing is squinting and looking for where those dark shapes are and following the map of where they are not making any judgments, using as few strokes as possible. So it's really important to mix a lot of paint. So you want to go in with a juicy amount of paint and know that you're not going to run out at any point during any one of these steps. So that's what's happening here. You know, I really want to look at where things turn, where they, um, and, and use the brush to make that turn. See that? You have to use the brush in the direction that you see and the way the form is made. That will really help. All right, I think that takes care of my darkest darks. Now I'm on the side mixing up something that I hope, not hope, it's going to have to be lighter than what I just put in. So I'm trying to lighten it up probably with a little bit more alizarin crimson and also some Naples yellow. What I'm not doing is I'm not using water to change the value of how dark or light it is. There I made a reference point. I put some, um, I put in some permanent rows just to be able to see how light where my medium's going to be, and they're going to be pretty light. But I'm not ready to go there quite yet. All right, dry everything. And actually, I think I do go into the middle column here. It's time to go into the middles, but I don't have anything that reads dark enough yet. Oh, I guess I decided I do. No, this is not one of the colors that I put in the medium. This is probably, yeah, yeah, it is, it is actually. So that's what I do next is I look at what is the next lightest, not light, but after I put in my darkest darks, what's the next lightest shapes that I see? And that's what I'm looking for right now. So these go in the middle column. Nothing can be as dark as, what, as the D. Nothing can be as dark as what I already put in. That's my basic construction, and that's my basic plan. So I'm not, I mixed up a whole lot of paint because what I don't want to do is I get further along in the process. If, if it feels like I'm running out of paint, you, you don't want to keep adding water to it because that's just going to make things lighter and thinner. That's the last thing I want to do. I want to keep color as 
bright and intense as possible. All right, now it's time to get lighter. So that's probably permanent rose. I'm looking at that next to the dabs I already made in the middle column, and it is indeed lighter. Not only is it lighter, but it's also brighter. So that's going to be the next color that I'm going to put in. So I have to just again squint my eyes and look for the next possible color. Well, I guess I felt like the permanent rose wasn't quite where I wanted it to be. I probably added a little bit of blue to it just to um, dull it down a little bit. All right, uh, either one would have worked. They look really the same from here. So that's what I'm doing now. Now I'm all involved in the medium shapes. And it's perfectly all right if I drive over something that I already put in as a dark, because that dark, as you know, with watercolor is gonna show through no matter what. You can always uh, make something darker for the most part, and you can also, but, but the, any layers underneath are going to show through. So it's preserving the white that becomes the, um, something you have to kind of be disciplined about. And if I, if I was good at using masking fluid, I would use it, but I, it, I'm terrible at it. <laughs> All right, so I've put in my darks. As you can see, I put in my lights. Now I'm taking care of medium shapes. And so far, I've used two colors from that medium column to accomplish that. So it doesn't look like much right now. And I probably should have dried it here, but I, I didn't. I was impatient today. So I think I'm on the side mixing. And what I'm doing is I want to make, there we go, color that's lighter than what I've used so far. And it's also warmer. I'm going to lean toward orange. One of the things that can happen here is in order to make it lighter, you kind of have to go toward your yellows, toward your fire side of the... Um, what do you call it? Color wheel. Yeah. So that's what's happening here. But they go together. There is, should not, it, it, in a way you're making a staircase from darkest to lightest shapes, but you don't want there to be too much of a jump that it's abrupt. And that's really what happens with your naked eye when you're looking at the petals anyway. They're, you know, first when you look and observe things, you think, oh, that's all one color. You look at it closer and you see, no, no, it's, it's a gradient of some kind. It usually starts off light and moves towards something darker or a form will work the other way. Start out darker and move towards something lighter. That's just the nature of how forms appear to our vision. So lots of careful observation when you're painting or not is really, really helpful. All right, time to move on. And I thought, well, I want a neutral that's light. So I put that in the light column, but it was way too light. I thought, oh, that's not gonna work. So what I needed to do was find one that was gonna fit in my medium column. I couldn't quite do that. So I lightened it up some more. What I have here is a neutral. So what I've done, like I said, is taken the mix that I uh, used with uh, that little bit of orange in it because I have enough. Added some Naples yellow and a tiny bit of uh, blue to it. You know, if you have uh, an orange and you add blue to it, it's going to neutralize it and turn it into either gray or uh, a beige or, or brown. And it's really important, I think, in any painting not to only have color, but to have some neutrals too. If you have some neutrals to balance the color, it actually makes the color seem more vivid. So that's what I'm doing here, and that's my first dab in the light column, and probably going to be my last dab in the light column is my guess. That's what usually happens in my paintings, is I have a few darks, a couple of whites, I mean a couple of lights, and most of my paintings are in the mid value. But if you squint your eyes, you will see that the darks are definitely darker than anything in the medium column. If you squint your eyes again, see that the mediums are lighter than anything in the dark column. The mediums are darker than anything in the light column. That's what this thing is all about in terms of shape. If you can get the shapes right and get the correct light or dark you know, value of the, the, the color doesn't matter that much. Oh, what am I doing here? I'm looking for something. I think what I felt was I didn't have enough intensity of color. Yeah, that's what it was. And I thought, all right, I'll mix up another dark that won't fit in my medium column, but that I can put in and will sort of make things a little bit more punchy. It's not a bad idea, but it didn't accomplish what I wanted it to accomplish. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to 
be smart about it and think about the color wheel. Now, I've used quite a bit of blue in this painting. I've used a lot of alizarin crimson, I've used a lot of Naples yellow, and I've used a lot of permanent rose and some cadmium orange. I've also, and um, the ultramarine blue and the cadmium, cadmium blue I have also used. So using all of those colors, I'm going to decide what to paint the stem. You don't pick any green that's on your palette because it won't go. So instead what I do is I use that orange mix and add a little bit of, say, yellow to it. And a little bit of um, any other blue that I've used prior to now so that it goes. In other words, it sort of feels like it belongs especially as you're getting near the end of the painting. Don't pick out a color you haven't used in the painting at all. At all. It will just, it'll look like false eyelashes on, on a pig. <laughs> it just doesn't work. All right, now this is all too monochromatic for me. I need some punch. So I've mixed up some cerulean blue and I'm putting it in a couple of places where the dark is truly, truly dark or would read as black. But I don't get involved in black in any way. I don't use any black in my paintings. I use grays, but I try to preserve as much color as I can in my grays. And that's the last thing that I do. So you can again look at my darks, my mediums, my lights, and see that I followed the plan. Put in my lightest lights first, then put in my darks with as few strokes as possible because I'm using a big brush, a number 12, flat, mixing up a lot of paint so that I don't get stingy or, or begin to brush, 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 brush. You can see it's about strokes long strokes, not lots and lots of tiny, tiny strokes. So there you can see a little bit more close up what's been going on. And if you squint your eyes or you have a value finder, you'll see that I did not violate the plan. You see the one X that I put in, in the light column. If I had done that, things would have been a little bit more askew, but I stuck with the plan. It's kind of about discipline, having a plan, having a strategy, and then having the discipline to carry it out to the very end. And then being really generous with paint and not being intimidated by your subject. All subjects are the same, whether this was a simple, you know, circle, a, a ball on a table, or whether it's a face, or whether it's a, uh, a rose. All shapes are made up of many other little shapes when you look closely at them. And if you can get better at discriminating what those shapes are and identifying how light or dark they are, then you'll be able to feel more successful in your paintings. And it's, it's, there's such a freedom in it because it's, it's really a fun experience. I don't know what I would do with a really, really tiny brush. I find, um, for me, even though I started my career with a very small brush, I used to do very exacting pictures of birds and used to paint them feather by feather. So it, I know it can be done. I'm just interested in, something, in, in simplifying forms as much as I can. And admittedly, I want to have fun. So remember to keep the whites of your paper white. Remember, that's what we did here. We preserved the whites, and then we looked for everything else. So keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet. We were working wet paint into wet paint. We were letting these colors blend into each other. So keep the whites of your paper white, your paint's wet, mass for value. Mass for value means we found the darkest shapes and found those masses and we applied a value or a dark color to them. So what is it? <laughs> Keep the white to your paper white, paint sweat, mass for value, and then mix for color. Color is sort of the last consideration. As long as you have the values correct, how light or dark something is in, in terms of shape relative to what's light or dark in terms of what's next to it, then color is almost irrelevant. This could have been painted as a blue rose. It could have been painted as a yellow rose. That doesn't matter. But how light or dark something is, that's what matters. So uh, please join my YouTube channel and take that screenshot and make your own rose. See you next time. Bye-bye.